I've switched here to a bot that I've created in the past couple months, and I've done that for the analyze section here because in the current bot that I'm creating, obviously I have no users yet. I've just created it today for this course specifically. So I am in this different bot because it has a lot of users and there's actual data to analyze here. So to unlock this analyze tab because on your bot you'll see it's locked there's no data there to unlock this tab you have to have at least three active users on your bot to generate this data and in fact nobody has been active on this bot for a while so i'm actually going to change the time range here to month to get some you know actual data to show and obviously first up here you have total users so pretty self-explanatory over the course of time how many users are you acquiring how many users are reachable meaning for the record reachable means that they have not deleted the conversation with your bot meaning you can't access them anymore you can't retarget them so that's very important this reachable users metric or total users rather um next you have daily new and blocked users so again pretty self-explanatory if you see any orange here it means that users have blocked you so nobody has blocked the bot in the past month which is good that's always good news that you can reach all the users next user activity pretty self-explanatory not only are they reachable but they're actually engaging with your bot so that's a statistic that's useful again a lot of these just our numbers they're not anything that are super helpful in analyzing but what's next i think is very important so user retention on the left here you know if you want to analyze that data you can personally what i find most useful is the popular user inputs here because this is great for determining what you should program your ai to be able to respond to now i'm going to dedicate a whole video in the future to basic ai responses that every user or every bot rather should be able to respond to such as hi hey hello goodbye, I love you, for whatever reason, that's a very popular input, etc. thanks, thank you. So those are basically the inputs for AI that every bot should respond to. But if you're in a particular niche and you notice users are submitting a certain type of phrase or word, then you should definitely have a response for that so it doesn't continuously output error messages that are going to annoy the user and put them off the path of your sales funnel. So you can scroll down, you can see popular user inputs. For here, I see buy, one version in all caps, one in lowercase, don't know, etc hi no bye etc so those are very popular user inputs and again there's a specific section dedicated to user inputs not recognized by ai so again chat fuel is really encouraging you here to respond to this data by programming your ai effectively and in a meaningful way so again you can drive these people down your sales funnel instead of making them stop get annoyed and not engage with the bot any longer and then finally down here, you have some basic analytics about the sources of where users are coming from. How do they get to your bot? You know, as I mentioned in the past video, is it Facebook ads? Is it a QR code? Is it an m.me link? Is it comments, acquiring users through comments based on AI rules? So that's really all the data that you need. The most popular blocks and buttons here are also useful. For example, if you notice in our example that very few users are going to the contact tab and most of them are going to the menu tab you know maybe that's fine because if people are using a bot to get food why would they go to the contact tab obviously they want to get the food mostly so if you notice trends like that sometimes they're obvious but at other times if you notice that people are getting stuck on a particular block they're not moving forward you can go back into that block and change analyze adapt to see what is the most effective way to again get people further down the sales funnel and make that purchase. And then finally, you do have options to connect to third-party analytic tools. Personally, I've not used any of them, but from what I've heard, dashbot.io is effective. These just really extend the functionality of your bot and the data that you can gain from them.